Iran struck Israel over the weekend in retaliation for a missile uh, attack or airstrike, I should say, that Israel committed in Syria, uh, in Damascus, and it took out, uh, it went into a residential neighborhood and took out what was considered a more or less a, an Iranian consul, uh, a consulate, not the embassy, but like a, um, a cultural consulate. And uh, but it was under as it, it, as a consulate under uh, diplomatic auspices. I have yet to see Israel uh, deny that that was not the target or that's not where it hit. There doesn't seem to be any at this point um, argument as to in the mainstream press as to what the building was that was hit. And international law, you don't do this with embassies and diplomatic missions. For better or for worse, the international order functions in the way that it does. And one of the sort of fundamental aspects of that is um, diplomatic immunity and um, some uh, level of higher level of protection because you want to keep channels open for communication between countries, even warring countries. And, but uh, the other day I had a conversation with, uh, with, with someone I know that is um, in the Zionist, uh, I would say, category. And uh, I had mentioned this attack on the consulate and they're like, well, it's, it's unclear what it was. And I'm like, really? Here is an exchange. It's unclear what the river in Egypt's name is. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it it is. It's. It really is stunning. The level of like, it's not even full on parsing. It's. It's like, maybe there's parsing. That's the defense. Uh, here is uh, the AP's Matt Lee asking uh, State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller. Um, uh, about that attack. Oh, sorry. Give me one second. Fresh. Give me one second. Having problems with. Uh... Have you guys decided yet or made a determination about whether what Israel hit in Damascus was a diplomatic we, facility we, or not? We have not. We have not. So how long is this going to take? I can't answer that question. We're look, continuing to look into it. Um, I don't have a timetable, well, well, but it's well, something that we're... What do you need to... Uh, uh, we need to, to gather enough information that will allow us to make an how? actual determination. You, got, you have no one on the ground in Syria. We have arranged... Overtly, uh, as I said to you when uh, the last time you engaged with me on this question, we have an, uh, a range of abilities, a range of ways to gather information from partner countries of ours who yeah. are on the ground. We have intelligence capabilities, off, uh, obviously, um, and we're continuing to gather information but we've not yet been able to yeah. determine. I, 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 I get it, but you were pretty quick into, you know, condemning the, uh, you know, the invasion of the Mexican embassy in, uh, in, in, in Ecuador. That was a very clear, well-established embassy. And this is not very clear uh, where they blew up. The, this is something that is taking a little bit more time. No one to, died to in that incident. Uh, but that's not the question. The question was, what is it? Is it was it an embassy or a consulate or not? And it was very yeah. clear. How in, in the, hard is very clear to figure that out? In the case of the Mexican, it's something that we're gathering information it's been on. Like two weeks, uh, and we continue More. to gather information. We don't have a determination. Let me, let me finish uh, it's really convenient that they did not have this at this point. Don't want to rush to judgment. I mean, it really. It, I guess it's possible. That after two weeks, you can't establish um, where Israel hit in Syria. I mean, it's not like it's not a big explosion. And I think uh, almost a half a dozen people died, were killed. Um, it does seem like they're slow walking this because part of the reason is it is a breach of international law. And the State Department recently signed off which, among other things, claiming that Israel was not inhibiting aid getting to Palestinians, which we know is the case. And they have to sign off that U.S. weapons are not being used 
in contravance to international law. It, it is the amount of damage this policy is doing to any, and I understand, like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not naive as to the uh, legitimacy or the consistency of U.S. foreign policy or how much it actually adheres to a rules-based international order. But, you know, there's an ebb and flow for these things. And uh, sometimes it's, you know, fake it till you make it or get close. And they're really not even faking it anymore. It really is just b blown it out of the water. And I, I, we're going to feel the implications of this for um, for a long time going into the future. And when you don't have the ability to project any type of soft power or leverage because of these international norms, what ends up happening is you're just relying on brute strength and uh, brute power. And then everybody does. And it's just a... Um, like a, a race to the bottom really uh just amazing what the price the u.s is paying for this i mean aside from all of the uh the, the moral implications etc as to what's going on there but the just a sheer price in um u.s reputation and any type of project to maintain uh, an international rules-based order just seems gone